Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on find the pivot integer. And in the problem, you're given a positive integer n and you want to find the pivot integer x such that the sum of all the elements between 1 and x inclusively equals the sum of all the elements between x and n. And you want to return it, and if it doesn't exist, return negative 1. And it's guaranteed that there will only be one pivot index. So in this first example, 6 is the answer because the sum of 1 to 6 equals the sum of 6 to 8. And in the second example, n is 1, so it's just 1. And in the third example, there is no number. So let's talk about some brute force ways of doing it, and let's talk about some optimization. So let's just say we have these numbers. We're looking for 1 through 8. So for brute force, pretty easy, and the constraints are easy enough to do brute force, so we can have an n squared solution. So we can just go one by one, and like for this integer, we can calculate what's the sum of 1 to, um, to x, right? So we can get 1 to x, and then we can get the sum of x to n. And we can do that for every integer. So like, we, let's say we try 4, We'll say like, okay, what's the sum of one to four? We can do that in a loop. And then what's the sum of four to eight in this case? We'll do that in a loop. So that'll give you an n squared solution and that'll work. And if it doesn't work for any of these, um, then it's fine. But notice you're doing a lot of recomputing. So for example, let's say we're on four. So for four, we have to calculate the sum of one to four. And then we have to calculate four to eight. But for five, we have to calculate one to five and five to eight. So you can see this is like very similar. So one to four and one to five, there's only one number difference. Same thing here, there's only one number difference. So the way to speed this up to O of n is you can calculate two sums. So the first sum will be like the right sum. So let's just calculate the sum of this whole array in this case. So this is 15, 21, 26, 30, 36. So we calculate this whole right sum and then we have a left sum of zero. And then we can just basically go through this thing and c is the left and right sum equal and the left sum will be the sum on the left and the right side will be the sum on the right so let's kind of walk through that solution um and we should get ideally uh we should get six so let's walk through that one let's maybe actually just type so we can rewrite these things so we have zero and 36. so for one and also yeah so for one, the left sum, you just basically take your old left sum and add one, so that's just one. And then the right sum is this whole thing, so it's 36. Then for two, you take your old left sum and you add two. So it's gonna be three. And then we also need to subtract now for two. The right sum for two is gonna be this. It's not gonna include one anymore. So we need to subtract one. So we're just basically subtract the element before and then we add the current element. Then for three, we're gonna add the current element, so six and subtract the element before, which is two, so we have 33 now. It's still not there, so for four, the sum is 10 for the left, and for the right, it is 29. Subtract the, I'm actually sorry, we need to subtract the three, right, because the right sum is this. So the old right sum used to be this, and now we're subtracting this. So it's gonna be 30 here. So it's still not good enough, so for five, we need to add the five to the left sum, so 15, and we need to subtract the four, because the four is no longer in it, so 26. And then finally, for six, hopefully this works out. We need to add the six, which is 21, and we subtract the five, so we have 26, or 21. So the sums are equal, and then we just return. So essentially for every number, like if we're on this number, it's gonna be the same as the number before, but you need to add the current number, and you need to subtract the number before, because for four, the left sum is this, and the right sum is this, and for five, or sorry, for four, the left sum is this, and the right sum is this, and for five, the left sum is this, so we're basically adding the current number and the right sum is this, so we're subtracting the number before. And that works and that's gonna give you um, an O of n solution. But we can still improve upon this. And the way to improve upon this further is because our numbers are increasing in a predictable way, right? They're always increasing by one. We can actually get the sum of a range in O of one. And basically um, for any array, you can get the sum of an array by getting the average times the length. And this works for any array and it makes kind of it makes kind of sense right you get the average number and the average number times the length of the array will give you the sum of the array but the problem is if your array is unpredictable like if your array is like numbers all over the place like five one two eight nine you can't really do this in o of one like how do you get an average of a random array in o of one but you can do it if your array increases predictably and so here our array does increase predictably so if we wanted for example for this array here um, remember our sum was 36 so 
the way to get the average because our array is increasing predictably of an array that does increase predictably is you just take the first plus last number and add it together and divide by two. So we will get eight plus one over two. And then we'll get four and a half here. And it makes sense, right? Because if you look, the left half is this, the right half is this. So the average is right between four and a half. So we get four and a half. And then you multiply it times the length of the array, and we can easily figure that out too, because our array, like if we know we have eight numbers, we can easily do that. So this is just eight. And then if we do this, so four times eight is 32, and a half times eight is 36. So now that we can get, like for any subarray, this lets us basically, if we know we want to get the, um, if we know we want to get the sum of any, we can do this with any starting number and any, any ending number, right? Like if we have x to y, basically this the, the, the length of this array or sorry, not the link, but the total will be um, x plus y over two times. So the length of an array is, this is kind of like a sliding window. Like what's the length of a sliding window? It's just y minus x plus one, right? So the length here would be eight minus one, which will be seven plus one. And you can use this formula to get the, um, the sum of any array you want now because because it's it's continuously increasing it's predictable but this wouldn't work for example if our numbers were like one negative five eight it's three we can't just be like let's just take one and three and take the average because it's not predictable but here it is so this is called an arithmetic sequence and that's what's predictable so what that allows us to do is now we can basically just binary search so these can be our bounds and let's walk through that And then we can just basically get a pivot number. So let's just say we pick some random pivot over here. We can calculate the left half and the right half in O of one. So the left half is just the sum of one through four. So you get the average, right? Four plus one over two times the length, which is four. Do the same thing for the right. See if they're equal. And if they are equal, you return the number. Now, if they're not equal, you basically just see which one's bigger. So if the left is bigger, Right? Like if this left is bigger, that means we have to go left. We have to decrease the left. If the right is bigger, that means we have to go right. So now we have a condition to binary search upon. So we could write this. So get left and right sum if equal return number. If left greater than right, go left, else go right. Right? So we basically just decrease one of our sums and we just keep binary searching until we either get something or we fail. So let's walk through uh, the solution real quick. So let's say we get a pivot here. So our left sum, we can do this in O of one. So this will give us 10. Our right sum is obviously bigger. So we know our left is too small. So we need to move our pivot point or we don't need to move our pivot point. We need to move our left point over here. So this is all no good. Then let's get another pivot. Let's say our pivot happens to be here. Then here, um, you will get this and this, and then th those will be equal, right? So we'll get 21 and 21 and it will return six. So that's how you improve it further with a binary search. Now with a binary search, we didn't need to, we didn't need to store a sum or anything. We can just literally binary search through our numbers. Now we get to log in. And that's pretty good. Um, so let's look at the solution really quick for this one. So here is our binary search. Just ignore this one for a minute. Let me actually move it down. So here it is. We just have our binary search with our left and right one to n standard binary search, get a pivot, get a left sum. Like I said, the left sum is one to the pivot point over two times pivot, which is the length. The right sum is the pivot point plus n, get the average times the length. If they're equal, return the pivot. If the left is greater, go right. If the right is greater, go left. Uh, sorry, if the left is greater than go left, right? We want to decrease the left and then just return negative one as a default. So that's the binary search solution. Now let's talk about the um, math of one solution. And I think this one is not super hard because you do have to know this like sum formula. Um, so you have to know the sum formula. It's not that bad to calculate like the, like what's the actual value here, right? We can use this. So basically we're looking for X such that one, the sum of one to X equals the sum of X to N. And because we know how to calculate the sum, we can just use that formula. So the sum of one to X using our previous formula is just the average. So one plus X over two times the length of the array, which is X equals, and we have to do this part. So this is X plus N over two times 
the length is n minus x plus one, right? Kind of like a sliding window, same thing. n minus x plus one. So these cancel out. Then let's actually like factor this out. And this is just like basic algebra. So we get um, x plus x squared equals, so let's do this part. So it's xn plus n squared minus x squared minus xn plus x plus n. Hopefully I did that right. Hopefully we get everything right. So let's see what cancels. So this cancels. And what else? So the X's cancel and I believe that's it. So let's move the X's to the left. So we get a minus X squared and a plus X squared. So we have two X squared on the left. So now this is gone. And then on the right, we have N squared plus N. And we can just solve for X. So X is going to be N squared plus N over two square root. And so we can basically just plug this in and get it in O of one. So in our case of eight, oh, we can just plug this in. So we'll get eight squared plus eight over two. And that's gonna be 64 plus eight. Uh, hopefully I did that right. So let's see, 72, yeah, 72. Yeah, I did do it right, okay, I'll just double check. Okay, so definitely did do it right. 72 over two is 36 and the square root is six. And basically what's going to happen here is sometimes you won't get a whole number. So let's try this for one and four and see what happens. So for one and four or for, for n equals four, sorry, for n equals four, we will get four squared plus four over two square root. So this is um, 20 over two, which is 10. So square root of 10 is not a whole number. So that's when you don't have like an integer that works. So basically you calculate this. This is always going to be smaller than, than n squared, right? Because you're basically doing, um, or, or this is always going to be smaller than n because you're basically doing n squared over two plus um, n over two, and then you're taking the square root. So the square root of n squared over two is obviously going to be smaller than like n, and the square root of this is going to be smaller. So this number is always going to, at least I think it's always going to be smaller, but either way, you will basically get a whole number if it works. Um, and yeah, I don't think there's ever a case where this is bigger than n. So you get this, and if you get a whole number, you return it. And if you don't get a whole number, like in this case here, then then your solution isn't possible. And that's basically all you need to do. So let's take a look at that solution. So we can comment this out and go to that other one that I was ignoring. And I think this one is like, it is a math one, but it's not some crazy thing, right? If you just know how to get the, the sum of a range, then you can just do that and then a bunch of stuff cancels. And so here it is. So we get our result. So it's n squared um, plus n over two, take the square root, and we return it if it's a number and if not return negative one. And the way to check if it's a whole number, at least one of the ways is you can um, mod it by one. So if your number is like 4.15, if you mod it by one, you won't get um, one or you won't get zero, right? So if a decimal modded by one, you will get um, like 0.15, I think here. And if it's a whole a number and you, any whole number modded by one will give you zero. So we just check, is it a whole number? I guess the other way to do it would be turn it into an integer and compare it to the decimal value. Maybe that's like not as stupid as this, but whatever, either one works. But yeah, so this solution also works and this is the O one solution. And like I said, I think this one's like reasonably easy math. So I wanted to show that one as well. But the main thing to take away from this is you, I, you, I would know the, um, the sum of a range because that does come up. Like, as you saw, we took our, like if you didn't know the sum of a range, you wouldn't be able to do this with a binary search because there's no way um, you can get this, like all the sums of all the sides in O of one. Like it's not possible without knowing the sum of a range. So I would know how to do the sum of an, this is an arithmetic range because it increases um, by like a constant number. And then also you can look up the sum of a geometric range as well. It's also not that hard to like, even if you don't know the actual formula, it's also not that hard to figure out. So the sum of a geometric range would be like a range that's like two, four, eight, sixteen. 32, right? A range that is multiplied by a constant number. Um, I would know those two and know how to derive them. Because in a lot of problems, they give you the actual, like you see this a lot, like, oh, the sum of something is like this or something like this. And then, and then you're like, how did they come up with this? That's how they came up with it. It's the sum of an arithmetic range. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be all for this one. So this is finally gonna be um, time of one space of one and the binary search would be um time o of log n and space o one.
So as always, even, or as it is for a lot of easy problems, even this is easy, the harder solutions are kind of interesting and you can use them for a lot of way more complicated problems. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that one. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.